The Bible tells us to give thanks in everything. So how do we do that? Sure, it's easy to be thankful when life is going well, but what happens when the journey becomes difficult? How do we give thanks in the midst of pain, struggle, or loss? You see, life has a way of breaking a heart of gratitude. Piece by piece, moment by moment, we lose sight of our calling to live thankful lives. This Thanksgiving, we need to be reminded of God's faithfulness. We need to stand on His promise to never leave us or forsake us. We need to trust the plans He has for us. Plans to give us hope and a future. When we fix our eyes on Jesus, gratitude is inevitable. For He walks with us in the deepest valleys and on the highest mountains. Today, we place our trust in Him alone. For this is where thankfulness overflows. Hey, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for those who are visiting. And thanks for family that's visiting, and Mark that walks in from the Philippines. How are you? Uh, I did not expect to see your face turn the corner. Good to see you, bro. Uh, we are uh, in our second week of a series called Grateful. Uh, last week, we began this short series looking briefly into Romans chapter 1, where Paul recounts the historic downfall of the Gentile nations into this downward spiral of sin. And we saw that it all began with ingratitude. He says in verse 21, For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God, nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Though they claimed to be wise, they became fools. So this whole downward spiral of idolatry and identity and into the insanity that results begins with failing to recognize God for who he is and failing to give thanks. Could that possibly be so simple uh, that we have fallen into this spiral, this pit of despair. So our first dimension of gratitude in this series that we saw is this, before everything, give thanks. So we're looking at three dimensions of gratitude. Our first one last week was before everything, give thanks. Recognize God for who he is and simply give thanks. Thanks. Acknowledge him and all that he has done in your life throughout history, the promises that he's given. Why? Because they're all founded on his character, and his character is unchanging. And so we can confidently give thanks before all things because of who he is. Today we're going to look at the second dimension of gratitude, and we're going to find that today in Paul's letter to the church in Thessalonica. Uh, turn with me to Thessalonians chapter 5. Thessalonians chapter 5. We actually are going to pick up right at the close of his letter in his final instructions of the letter. Chapter 5, beginning in verse 12. Now we ask you, brothers, to respect those who work hard among you, who are over you in the Lord and who admonish you, hold them in high regard and in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers, warn those who are idle. Encourage the timid. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure no one pays back wrong for wrong. But always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, 
For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Lord, we thank you this day for your word. We thank you for the promise of your word that it will not go forth and return to you void without accomplishing that for which you have sent it. And so, Lord, we pray this day that your word would have your way in our hearts, in my heart, and in my mind, and in my family, in our church family, and and Lord, in the circles and spheres of influence that we engage in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. I'm just taking notes on my on the passage that I forgot to write something down. <laughs> I love I love that that God t- teaches me while while I'm talking. Uh, <laughs> isn't that great? Uh, I have found, however, He teaches me much better when I stop talking. Uh, just that's that's just a side note. <laughs> just a side note. First Thessalonians 5.18, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. The word here in Greek is eucharisteo, eucharisteo. What, do you th- what word do we get in churchy circles uh, that comes out of that? Yeah, eucharist. Did you know that? That when we're talking about the eucharist, that's the word that's used for the celebration of the Lord's table and some other denominations, they use that term. Uh, that word just means thankfulness, giving thanks. And so every time that we're celebrating the Lord's Supper, we're giving thanks to the Lord for all that he has done, right? And proclaiming his death until he comes. The Eucharist, that's right. Uh, This is what we're doing each and every time that we're celebrating the Lord's Supper. The word here in Greek is used about 50 plus times in in its various forms. In the New Testament, it literally just means to be grateful, to actively express gratitude. The Old Testament equivalent concept was a word, is the word yada, which literally means to, to throw or to shoot your hands up. Isn't that a, a great picture? To throw or to shoot your hands up. Uh, places like First Chronicles 6, 1 Chronicles 6.1, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his love endures forever. And so throughout scripture, to give thanks was not just words that we say or even a feeling that we hold in our hearts or in our heads, but rather to give thanks biblically was an active choice of the will to give authentic, passionate expression of gratitude or gratefulness or thankfulness and appreciation, right? Like there were, there were physical attributes that accompanied gratefulness. You could tell when somebody was grateful. Why? Well, they were shooting their hands up in praise to the Lord. I'd like us to notice a few things about this passage in Thessalonians 5 this morning. The first one, is that gratitude is not a suggestion, right? Paul doesn't say, you know, it might be a good idea if. It's actually a command in the passage. It's not a suggestion. Gratitude is a command. Secondly, gratitude is, I think, humanly impossible. Look at the passage and it finds its home among, among two other impossible tasks. Be joyful, always. Pray, continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. It seems like Paul's trying to emphasize something, right? Like, 
Those are some crazy qualifiers. Be joyful always? Come on. Paul, you of all people should know, right? He's been through some rough stuff. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. But here's the thing about challenges like this in Scripture. If it's humanly impossible and yet we are commanded to do it, then the ability to accomplish it must come from a power outside ourselves. Give thanks in all circumstances. If I can't do that in my human strength, then there must be a strength outside myself to enable me to obey this command. And I think we see that in the, verse, the rest of the verses to come. This is the, maybe the third point. Gratitude is a, is a Trinitarian work. It's a work of the Trinity. Look, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Wait a minute. They're all three showing up here in the passage, right? This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And so don't quench or put out the Spirit's fire. God's will, that's speaking to purpose. In Christ Jesus, this is Paul's phrase that he uses all the time, especially if you study like the book of Ephesians. Walk through that. How many times does he say in Christ? In Christ. This is talking about a deep-seated foundational identity that the believer has in Christ. God's will speaks to purpose. In Christ speaks to our identity. And don't put out the Spirit's fire. He's talking about the power by which to live out this impossible command. Don't quench the Spirit and His power at work in your life. There's purpose, there's identity, and there's power for the task that he has laid before you. And what's the task? To be joyful always, to pray unceasingly, and to give thanks in all things. It's a work of the Trinitarian God in and through your life to accomplish this reality. Gratitude is a command. It's not humanly possible, but it's a work of God in and through your life. And Thankfully, we don't always get this in Scripture, but Paul even gives us a why. Uh, Have you ever noticed that when God gives you an instruction or leads you into something, he doesn't always tell you why? Is that only my experience? Like, frequently, I don't get the why. Sometimes afterwards, we get the why, right? (laughs) Sometimes after we step out in obedience, then we understand the why. Sometimes we never understand the why. But here in the passage, Paul gives us a why. Why? Why? For this is God's will for you. For this is God's will for you. Does this mean that every circumstance is God's will for you? Is that what it means? Yeah, it's not suggesting, I think some have suggested, therefore, any circumstance that happens to you is God's will. I don't think that's the intent of the passage. I think he's saying gratitude, the state of living in gratitude is God's will for his people. Living your life centered in the Father's purpose for you, grounded in your identity in Christ, empowered by the fire of the Holy Spirit. This is God's will for you, and Paul is saying Practice the practice of joyful always and praying continually and giving thanks in all things is the expression of the life and work of God in and through your life. Does it look humanly possible? No. Bingo. Now, now you're getting it, right? That's precisely what God is leading us to. God wants to do it in and through you. It's a command. It's not humanly possible. It's a work of the Trinity. There is a reason why, and the one that I noticed as I was reading through that I didn't write down, 
This is a part of your sanctification. Look at verse 23. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? This process of gratitude, of walking in a spirit of gratitude in your life, is part of God's process of sanctification. What does that word mean? That's a big churchy word. It just means the process by which we are being transformed into the likeness and image of Jesus Christ. God is transforming us from the wretch I once was to the son and heir that he has called me to be by the power of his spirit in and through our lives, he is sanctifying us wholly, completely, W-H-O-L-L-Y, holy, right? He is in process in each one of us. And this walking in, in um, chosen gratitude is a part of your sanctification process and my sanctification process. It's part, it's like, Part of the chisel that God, God is using to fashion the masterpiece that he is creating of your life. I recently found a, a really interesting article in positivepsychology.com. It's not, my, it's not one of my regular reads, but it's, it's very good. It's called The 14 Benefits of Practicing Gratitude. Uh, and... If you want the link, it's quite lengthy. It's, it's a good read. I'll give it to you. But um, they give a number of benefits that, that occur in people's lives from practicing gratitude. Increased happiness and positive mood. More satisfaction with life. Less materialistic. Less likely to experience burnout. Better physical health. Better sleep. Less fatigue. Lower levels of cellular inflammation greater resiliency, um, and it encourages patience and humility and wisdom. It's a great article. One of the studies that was highlighted uh, was a 2017 study by Wong and Brown who asked how gratitude affects us mentally and physically, and their study involved assigning students to, into three different groups Quoting from the study here, group one wrote a gratitude letter to another person every week for three weeks. That's a pretty good practice. Group two wrote about their thoughts and feelings about negative experiences that they had during that time. And group three didn't write anything. All three groups received counseling services, and group one reported significantly better mental health four and 12 weeks after the intervention period ended. The researchers analyzed their findings to figure out how gratitude has the effects, and they determined that gratitude does four things. Gratitude disconnects us from toxic negative emotions and the ruminating that often occup uh, accompanies them. Do you know what ruminating means? You know, how a cow coughs back up their food and rechews it? Like, we do that, don't we? Have you ever been in, stuck in, like, bitterness or, or got a grudge against somebody and just it just keeps coming up, and you keep chewing on it over and over? It's, what a beautiful picture. Uh, <laughs> Gratitude, gratitude disconnects us from toxic, negative emotions. Yeah. Number two, expressing gratitude helps us even when we don't explicitly share it with someone else. We are happier and more satisfied with life because we completed the exercise. So even when you don't share that gratitude with a targeted person or thing, uh, it still has positive personal effects. Number three, the positive effects of gratitude, of gratitude writing, compound like interest. You may not notice the benefit of a daily or weekly practice of gratitude writing. So it's, the article's talking about some journaling. But after several weeks and months, you will. So the, the positive effects of that journaling uh, they're saying is compounding. Number four, a gratitude practice trains the brain to be more in tune with experiencing gratitude. So a positive plus a positive equals more positives, they say. 
right? So I'm actually, through these exercises of gratitude, I'm actually rewiring my brain to be more in tune with gratitude. What does all this mean? Oh, wait, I got one more study. One more study that came out of that uh, article. Another study in 2016 showed that gratitude journaling might reduce inflammation in people who have experienced stage B asymptomatic heart failure. And researchers Redwin and his Redwine and colleagues uh, piloted an eight-week gratitude journaling intervention for people with stage B asymptomatic heart failure. Uh, so gratitude and the practice of gratitude helps your heart, like not just your soulish heart, but like your real heart strengthens your organs. What does all this mean? Well, once again, we see modern science agreeing with scripture, right? Gratitude is good for you. It's God's design. This is why God says, it's God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Health and wellness and wholeness. God's in the business of that kind of transformation, right? This kind of restoration. Science is finally coming around to recognize it. That there really are benefits to some of the things that we're instructed in the word of God. It shouldn't surprise us, after all. Each of these dimensions of gratitude that we're looking at in our study are written by the Apostle Paul. First was Romans 1. Uh, today is Thessalonians, and next week is another excerpt from Paul. He's constantly speaking things like this. In Philippians, he says, Rejoice always in the Lord. And again, I say, Rejoice let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. If you didn't know much about Paul's life, you'd probably, you might be tempted to say, well, yeah, that may be for you because you've just had it really easy in life, right? Is that Paul's experience that we read throughout the scripture? No. Thrown in prison, beaten, tortured, ill, uh, accosted by some effect of the enemy. In Philippians 4 there, just a few verses later, he, he makes clear that he wasn't saying these things because everything was always great for him. He said, I've learned to be content, whatever the circumstance. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. All right, this is the work of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit in and through your life to give you strength to live these things out. Last week, we saw the first dimension of gratitude was, before all things, give thanks. And today we see the second, in all things, give thanks. So my question for us this morning, what circumstances do you find yourself in this morning? or in this season of life? And what can you do to align yourself with the purpose and the identity and the power of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit in order to give thanks in that circumstance? Have you ever considered writing a gratitude letter once a week? That was a pretty good practice in that study. That wouldn't be a bad idea for all of us, right? 
Just ask the Lord, Lord, who would you have me to write a letter to this week? Maybe it's an email. Maybe it's a text message. I would challenge you and myself, let's do that this week. Just ask the Lord, how can I put to practice an expression of intentional gratitude toward another person this week? How about a gratitude letter to God in your prayer time, in your, in your regular study time? How about just taking a journal and writing out to the Lord? Lord, I'm so thankful. And start delineating the things in your life that he has blessed you with or blessed you in. Like even in the middle of this horrible circumstance, thank you, Lord, for your presence with me. Instead of perseverating or ruminating on the negative, maybe it's time to dwell on the goodness of God uh, in your life and in my life. How about you? What situation are you walking in right now? A season of life that the Lord is tapping you on your shoulder and going... Maybe you should switch your attention. Got anything? I'm really asking the question, actually. That wasn't. That wasn't rhetorical. <laughs> Nobody. Oh, good. <laughs> or transitioning and all sorts of relationship stuff changing, not bad, but, but a lot. And so going back to this very thing, be anxious for nothing, don't ruminate on the negative stuff. Everything you said just resonates. Oh, totally. Does anybody regularly practice journaling? Yeah, quite a few people. I, I uh, regularly practice buying journals. <laughs> uh, I love the journals. I am so bad at keeping up any continuity at all. I'm just horrible at it. And so I find scat scattered journals that have like two pages written in, and then I'm like, abandon it. But I find a really cool one in the bookstore. It's ridiculous. I'm not very good at it. So I'm going to try to put this into practice. I'm much better at, at like shooting somebody a text or, like, or emailing somebody an encouraging word than I am journaling something. So, uh, but I'm going, to, I'm going to try to put that into practice. I, um, there was a testimony I heard in a message that I listened to recently. And there was a man who came to faith in Christ because he recognized in his life he had been so blessed, but he realized he had no one to thank. Wow. And then that led him to faith in Christ, to thank his God who had given him everything. That's amazing. Yeah, that's the antithesis of although they knew God, they, they didn't acknowledge him as God or give thanks. And although he didn't know God, <laughs> he got to know him so he could give thanks. That's amazing. Twice yesterday, um, the Lord, the, the, the message came through clearly, which, which was God, God uses the hard things in my life for good. And it's like, I don't, I don't go to the, I don't go to the gym and, and pick up the light weights, right? I pick up the weights that are just... Yeah. Just a, little, just a little heavier, just a little, he yeah. you know, heavier than what's comfortable, right? And that's, and that's what causes me to grow. Um, and, and the Lord does the same in our lives. Uh, again, he doesn't cause, as, as you said, he doesn't, he doesn't cause the bad things, but he uses the bad things 
to cause good in my, <laughs> you, you know, in, in me. And as I look back uh, the, uh, over my life, the hardest moments, the, the greatest s struggle yielded, yielded the sweetest fruit, uh, if I want to. Um, uh, and... And, and even Esther Beasley was sharing with us uh, as at the youth last night, and and she was saying the same thing. The, the, there was a watershed moment in her life at 15, and that 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 point at which is God good and 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 the Lord was and and she embraced Lord, you are good, and 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 chose to follow him and not not allow the struggle that she was going through to turn her away from the Lord and yeah. and then as a, as a result like she she just she shared that that she has a whole list a whole page full of of all the good things that came out of that very very hard very personally hard and and just a horrible situation but very personally hard situation and that's that's just consistent. That, that's, you know, if, if we're willing to wait and hold on and trust the Lord, that's what he does. And then, yeah, are you? You know how in James 1 it says, consider it all joy yeah. and encounter various trials. And <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, uh, just issues, illnesses, injuries and such in my family, uh, particularly right now. And uh, and it, it's actually brought the family together. And some of them are not believers, but they are now being exposed yeah. to the prayers of faith and uh, the actions uh, of uh, the sacrificial actions of believers in the family. Uh, so, I mean, you just can't help but th give thanks and rejoice. Uh, at, uh, <clears throat> messages that are coming out that would otherwise probably never be shared. Yeah. I mean, it's just a real blessing. That is awesome. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Lord, Amen. in that circumstance. Amen. Yeah, Lori. I just had a birthday a couple weeks ago, and I'm not thankful to have a birthday, but every time I have a birthday, I'm always like, wow, I've been given 63 years, you know, and I'm like... I think of, I had a baby sister born, stillborn, right after um, I was born, and I always think, and I, I always think of her, and I always think, so why was I given life, and she didn't make it? I mean, I know I'll know her, I'll meet her someday, and I'm looking forward to that, but, you know, every year you have a birthday, it's like, wow, look at how many years I've been given, and, I, and how many children die, how many young adults die in accidents, and just... I was blessed with 63 years. I just think that's amazing, and I'm so thankful for that. You know, it's like, why me? You know, why not me and, and not the next person? But it just makes you realize, I guess, that God truly does have a purpose for you, and, you know, if you're going to keep having those years, he, he wants to still use you, you that's know? Right. And, and I'm just always thankful for that, and I, I guess I don't think of it enough. But boy, my birthdays, I always. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, if, you, if you're still here, he still has a plan for you and a role for you to play in his kingdom work. Uh, Ashley, did you? Yeah, I was just going to say, this past week, um, I appreciate the focus on thankfulness because uh, there was a day where I felt like there was just a ton I had to get done, and it, I felt my strength just tanking. It was just like, oh, boy, but it was like things I knew it, that were right. And I feel like the Lord was like, Ashley, he has gave me the verse, when you are weak, you're, uh, you are made strong. And I just feel like the Lord said, thank me for strength today. Just just put it on your tongue. Thank me for strength. And so I did. I just out loud was like, thank you, Lord, that I am strong today. Thank you, Lord, that I can do this. Just just walk in, like, purposeful, every moment, just thankfulness out loud. And it was just amazing how um, I just felt the supernatural strength of the Lord just come in in a mighty way. And I just felt like this past week, um, he just like would highlight whenever I'd read the word. I just like he would highlight for me. He the word give. Mm -hmm. He gives. He gives. He gives. He gives. And it was just like this new 
understanding that we are constantly walking in God giving to us. And it's like that give thanks. He gives and we walk in thankfulness. Yeah. It was just like, wow, like like the care of God and how he's constantly giving to us. And we don't have to earn it. We don't deserve it. He just gives. He's constantly giving to us. And it was just like a new awareness of like, wow, I want to be thankful. I want to be thankful because I'm understanding the um, how he is just overwhelmingly giving to me all the time. And I'm not even... I don't deserve it. I don't. I mean, there's no reason for him to give to me, but yet he's giving. So it's just a... And he does because it's his nature, right? Mm -hmm. Because he's a giving God. Amen. Well, one of the... One of the... uh, (coughs) Maybe the most stark uh, contrasts or or illustrations of thankfulness in all things, I think, is is, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, You know, the verb giving thanks is not actually in that passage, but but it is such an example uh, of it when they are, they've refused to bow down to the idol and they're about to be thrown in the furnace, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we're thrown into a blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up like in the face of literal fire they're essentially giving thanks to God and and rejecting the easy out and saying we know God you're able and even if you don't we know where we're going (laughs) what a beautiful picture of gratitude to God thankfulness and sold outness. There's probably a better word for that, but nothing comes to mind. Uh, And so that's my heart's cry for myself uh, and for us as a church family in this season. I'm glad that this season comes around every year because I need a yearly reminder, right? Like, hey, get your eyes off the circumstances and get your eyes onto Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith, because It doesn't matter the circumstances. He can use it in your life for his glory and for your ultimate good. Can we stand together?